Welcome to another episode of Meet the Author Live for book publisher, New Degree Press, or NDP. I'm your host, John Saunders. NDP is part of Manuscripts, Inc. This enterprise has now published over 1,700 authors from six continents and earned a spot on the Inc. 5000 list, Inc. Magazine 5000 list for the second year in a row. This is a list of the fastest growing privately held companies in America. Think you have a book in you? Want to start or accelerate your move in the next 12 to 15 months? Visit manuscripts.com to learn more now. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this is a comprehensive coaching program that will take you from idea to published book, not just published, but published like a second time author, which includes audience, active audience creation and activation, really important parts of the journey. Today, we're doing a new segment of meet the author live. This is an opportunity to learn everything valuable there is to know about the author, truly valuable. And we'll find out that in the rapid fire questions later. And we can answer your questions in the chat. So to start, please drop your uh, drop in the chat where you're joining us from today. It's always fun to see where our guests are joining in from. We've had an incredibly global audience this week, and uh, no doubt uh, we're going to see that again here today. So please drop that in there. And that is the same chat that we'll use to ask and answer your questions as we go throughout the journey. So as you have <clears throat> questions or comments throughout the, uh, the session here today, in about 30 minutes or so, please drop them in there and we'll try to answer those as well as we go. Uh, so today I have brand new author with me, Miriam Zilberglate, or AKA Dr. Z. Yeah, she just published her new book, The 3G Cycle of Life. It is already a top new release on Amazon and is available wherever you buy books online. She also has a new podcast out there uh, on the creator community, uh, which is available today on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, consume them out there. So a quick bio on Dr. Z. Uh, she's a triple board certified physician in internal medicine, geriatrics, and obesity with extensive clinical and academic experience. Uh, Dr. Z is interested in areas of well-being, burnout, mental health, and leadership development. She completed a fellowship in leadership education and development. A she has a certification as a mental health ally and training as a physician wellness advocate. She's been recognized for multiple achievements, including mentor of the year, well done, and American College of, uh, and American College of Physicians Young Achiever. <clears throat> She's originally from Peru, has two amazing sons. Uh, we'll probably hear a story or two about them today and their thoughtfulness, a caring husband and a supportive family. Her dream is to help others achieve lives full of joy, meaning, and well-being. Miriam, great to see you. Welcome to Meet the Author Live. Thank you so much for having me. And I can, I mean, I am celebrating right now seeing all these names. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm so happy. <laughs> This is uh, fun. Oh, look who's first on the board here. Well done, Alex. Well, My husband. Well, I well love done. him. <laughs> uh, oh, we've got a couple of hidden ones here. Sometimes the names don't show up, but Howard jumped in there. Thank you, Howard. Where, where are you joining Howard. us from? Where are you joining us from, buddy? Uh, we've got an Ohio guest on here, all the way from Ohio, Woodstock, Hi, California, another name that's hiding out there. So maybe drop your name in there. British Columbia, Love Whistler. Uh, <clears throat> Caracas. See, I told you it was going to happen. We've already Hi, gone Monica. to another country. <laughs> All the way from Venezuela. Uh, good to see you. Michigan, Arlington, Virginia. Oh, right. Suzanne, well to, welcome. Good to see yeah. you. San Antonio, <laughs> Chapel Hill, San Francisco. Tomas, hello. We've got all the time zones. Oh, my dear Susie. All the time zones Maria. covered here. <laughs> uh, amazing. Oh perfect God, Valentine's, perfect Valentine's Day highlight. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Miriam, let's jump right into it, my friend. How does it feel to be a published author and have your book out there on Amazon? Uh, first, amazing. Second, <laughs> it's kind of delivering a baby. This has been almost an eight-month pregnancy, and finally I have a, a baby that is my book, so it's very exciting. <laughs> Incredible. I've heard that analogy from a number of female authors out there, and uh and here you are, and already a top seller on Amazon. Incredible uh, how quickly the success has come from this. But knowing your story a bit since you were on the podcast, and we'll have your episode out uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. It's going to premiere. Uh, just an incredible story about, uh, we actually was a panel interview for those who don't know, and it's uh, available on the, uh, the Creator Community channel on uh, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, where you get podcasts. And we talked about trying to be human at work. So today we're going to do a little bit of a, a, a sort of a preview to that. Uh, but first, learn a bit more about Miriam's book. But first, uh, Miriam, many times when we write a book, it's a journey of incredible learning. What do you think you learned from writing your book? The first thing I believe is uh, that I cannot do things by myself, that I don't need to do things by myself. 
that I am allowed to be vulnerable. I am allowed to ask for help and that is okay. Um, this has been the most humbling experience ever, uh, especially coming from a culture as, as a physician where you are supposed to be always a superhero. Uh, here I didn't have to be a superhero. I was expected to be a human and that was wonderful. That's amazing. And it happened, right? You got through it. You wrote a book. I just dropped the Amazon link in there for those who want to get it. And it's available for a limited time for 99 cents for a few more days, the ebook. And I think the hardcover's out today. I'm sorry, the paperback? The paperback is, yes, for Valentine's Day. And we are doing a special deal. So if you send me a picture of the, the purchase of the, the, the book, the, the, the paperback, uh, and an email of someone that you love, I will be sending for free an ebook copy for Valentine's Day until uh, the end of the week, so Sunday. So if you love someone and you want to give a present, let me know, send me the email and I will, I will do the job for you. <laughs> and I would tell you, I would take this a step further and say, go out and buy five copies of it. And there's an easy way to do that on Amazon and share ebook copies for 99 cents. Be sure to write Miriam a review. But this is a story people need to hear, and we're going to dig into it here in a bit. But this is an incredibly compelling story about living a more fulfilled life. And Miriam has created quite a roadmap to help get you there. Uh, but I would like our listeners to hear, Miriam, you know, how did you sort of fit this into your life? You're a mom, you're a busy person. You know, how, did you, how did you find time to write a book? Um, seems, seems impossible. <laughs> seems impossible, I will say. And, and Alex is there and, and my witness. Uh, I will never be able to do this without the help of my husband. And, and that's, again, um, something that I had to learn. And, and also the, the help of, of friends and, and family and, and all these new family members that I adopted from LinkedIn. And, and many are here right now. I, I have a lot of support. This was not an easy journey. This was a wonderful journey, however, so I'm grateful. So incredible. And, you know, what do you think? It's, it's, it's never easy, but having that community around you, as we often say around here, never write alone. You know, what do you think was the hardest part about getting the book done? Oh, that, that, that made the difference, right? Because uh, this was a change of culture. I entered in, in a community full of people that I didn't know before, um, mentors and, 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 the, and the, uh, the, the group of other writers, right? And of course, my editors and coaches. And I didn't know them. And suddenly, I need to trust on them my most uh, deeper feelings, stories, secrets, right? Start saying things that I never share with anybody. And... Um, you feel at the beginning that you maybe you are competing against the other writers, right? And you are like, I mean, we will be selling a book, both of them, of us. And suddenly you realize that, no, you are a family. We were growing together. We were crying and laughing together. And I was super lucky to have, especially two individuals that I love, like if they were my sister, uh, uh, Jenny and Hannah. Um, they, they were like, they were with me all the way. They were the good days and the bad days. We were together. And that's the way that we finish our books. And I believe that that's the reason why we were, the three of us, so successful, because we did it together. You know, having that support is so, so important. And I'll tell you, you know, you mentioned it, you sort of danced around it for a moment, but there's a really vulnerable feeling to creating <sighs> something, isn't there, right? You're putting it out there. It's permanent. Uh, somebody asked me on an interview recently uh, uh, where I was the guest on the show, they said, what was the hardest thing about writing the book? And I honestly, I thought about it for a minute. I said, you know, deciding when it was done, right? Because at some point you have to send in an email that says, this is it. I'm not going to make any more edits, right? What was that moment like for you? Oh, I was having grief, <laughs> anticipatory grief, as right. ridiculous as that. Yes, I was asking myself, now what? I, I have this family in the Creators Institute, right? And outside in LinkedIn. And, and what will happen after I finish the book? And uh, like, what's the next step? I will miss all these interactions. Uh, what I realized is that you are just closing a chapter of the book to start a different chapter. We are not just finishing a book and closing all this. It's not the end of life. It's, it's just we need to 
set a different mindset now. Um, and actually, <laughs> kind of what we did uh, with Jenny and Hannah is like we promised that we will be in touch for you know several months at least in the future we will be in touch and and and, and working together uh, for the next you know the next episode. That's so cool, and Hannah Austin. Is that who you're referring to? Yes, yeah. Hannah. Yes, and Jenny, Jenny Barnes. Yeah, I think I saw her on here somewhere. Hey, Hannah, uh, <laughs> that is amazing, right? And and it's going through this vulnerable experience is such. It is a way to bring people together. And uh, I still talk to so many folks that I wrote with over the when I wrote my book in 2020. It's really amazing. And if you want to hear more about these incredible analogies that uh, Doctor Z here likes to use, I just dropped her YouTube interview uh, in here. You can set up an alert to watch that on YouTube. It launches premieres tomorrow at 9 a. M. It's a panel discussion with her and two other amazing folks, uh, Dr. Zhao and Dr. Jenny Byrne. Uh, and it is the book is on sale on Amazon now. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, look at Jennifer doing your, some of your PR work here. Well done, Jennifer. Uh, Hi, Jennifer. And oh, another note here from uh, Liliana. I can't go. Liliana. Uh, I love it. Such a great group here. Uh, what is this note here? Parkinson's law. Work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Interesting. Oh, Linda, I love you. <laughs> Getting philosophical here. I love it. Uh, Jennifer, jumping on there. Uh, <laughs> let's get back to your book here for a minute and give us people a sense. You know, let's get into this a bit here. You know, what? What was your inspiration for writing this book? First of all, what what drove you? So my inspiration was. Uh, was actually not a positive inspiration. And, and that's kind of the special thing about this book. I was very frustrated, upset. I was trying to um, create awareness about the negative things happening in the healthcare system. I was having a, a very elegant tantrum <laughs> when I started the, the book. Uh, but what I learned through the process is that I am not that person. I am not a person that is furious against the system and against life. And I was able, with the help of my editors and, and my friends, and you know, even you, you were there actually at the beginning. You were one of the ones, the first ones to have this conversation with me, to change the perspective from a negative perspective to a positive perspective. It's not how bad is the system, it's what we can do to make it better for others and for ourselves. And that was the biggest transformation of the book from a complete book about burnout. Now burnout is just one chapter of 22 and everything else is a positive message to share with others and to, to, to provide hope and to provide, you know, uh, opportunities for achieving dreams and, and achieve well-being. Incredible. I love how you have this ability to take a very challenging, uh, what did you call it? An elegant tantrum. I really like that. That should, <laughs> be, <laughs> that should be your new hashtag. I think you use now hashtag elegant tantrum uh, is what invented my book. Uh, I love that. But you know, you, you have this ability and part of the inspiration, I think of your book is to take, don't see challenges or frustrating experiences as what they are and beat yourself up for, but turn it into something positive. In this case, a message, a book and a mission. And you know, I, I think that's really beautiful. And how can people join your mission if they'd like to? Oh, so the the something that was created uh, kind of randomly, but I believe that is the core of the book and, and really shows the ones that are supporting me uh, is to create a video. So what I am asking is, if you read something in the book that touch your heart or that makes you feel... Uh, connected, please record a 60 second video and send it to me. And I am doing small documentaries, two minutes documentaries with all these positive messages so we can share them around the world because the idea of the book is to create a positive impact. And we create it when we learn something and we, we improve ourselves, but we also create it when we help others. And I am creating this, you know, butterfly effect, this ripple effect with the help of all of you guys. So if you can send me your video, I will love to, you know, have you as, as part of this, this process of creating a ripple effect around the world. I think I've seen a few of those on uh, LinkedIn already. Well yes. done. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all the comments and questions in the chat here. Well done, folks, our listeners out there. 
Uh, let's see. Marisol, Mwah, so happy that you are here. Marisol is also part of our group, so she will have a book soon also. <laughs> Very elegant tantrum indeed, right? Good, good hashtag, right, Marisol? <laughs> uh i love it uh happy valentine's day thank you uh maria she's my student she was my student barbara i love you thank you so much for being here so many uh great comments here so much love and support what a powerful and profound shift to make from what's wrong to how we can make it better and really seeing everything as a gift and you've certainly embraced that this this growth mindset uh miriam which i so 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 appreciate jennifer uh yeah happy valentine's day writing a book uh elegant tantrum that one that's a popular one out there today no doubt about it oh there's hannah hello hannah Anna. Uh, <laughs> please check her book her book is a spectacular go and, and look for hannah in, in amazon you you will not believe how amazing is that book hannah was on the show just a few days ago uh hello head meet heart uh great to see oh there she is uh Hashtag the three G elegant <laughs> tantrum. Well played, well played, Marisol. Uh, that's so funny. Uh, oh, Jennifer, great minds think alike. There you go. Uh, so so funny. Uh, everyone's jumping in on the elegant tantrum. I love it. Uh, oh, here we go. Is there a question in here? Oh my god. The best way to fix broken systems goes beyond pointing out what's wrong and assigning blame. It's finding a way to build something beautiful and realign what's broken. And certainly the story here. Uh, Thank you, Lonica. So happy to have you. Enrique, hola, como estas? <laughs> <laughs> he will say, huepa. <laughs> Look at this, straight out of New Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so let's give people a little bit of a little taste of the book. What is the 3G life cycle? What's this book about? So I have been resilient all my life. I never knew why or how. Of course, my husband will tell you that I am more resilient outside of my house than inside of my house. My powers are, are, are less at house. I have my tantrums at house. Uh, but um, I have been able to, you know, bounce back and bounce back. During COVID, it was not so easy to just leave things to good luck. So I will bounce back again. <laughs> now the question is, how do I do it? How, how do I use my superpowers for real and how I help others? And this idea of the 3G cycle came to my, to my mind is how do I do it? And I believe that my cycle in life always starts with goals. I am very good setting goals and I, I am very strict with myself. I, I want this and I will get this. Uh, and and I, I feel like that's my number one motivation, my goal. And sometimes those are mandatory goals, right? Finish a school, graduate, for some cultures like get married before 30 uh, or have kids, whatever it is. And sometimes our dreams, writing a book, going to Italy, uh, falling in love. Um, and then how I continue my cycle was the question, and, and I need this fuel. And sometimes the fuel is an internal fuel, my own grit, and, and I, I have fuel, I am energetic. But sometimes that energy is not enough, or you are so tired that, that you don't find the energy inside of you. And that's when community comes to be so important, when you get the energy from those that are your cheerleaders in life, right? And your mentors and your coaches. And, and that's the second G, that is great, uh, internal or, or external. And in theory, we should be closing that, that cycle with achieving our goal that will be our third, third G. But the truth is that many times we don't achieve our goals uh, for good or for bad. And that doesn't mean that we fail. Uh, we can be just not ready and we go again back to, <laughs> to the cycle, like in a video game, right? We try again in the same level. That's one option. The other option is like, we don't care more about that goal. You wanted to have a Ferrari when you were 20 and now you are a father and, and you have five kids that play soccer and use bicycles. Now you need a van instead of the Ferrari. That's not a failure. You just need to change your goal based on your <laughs> current reality. And sometimes it's just, you know, you, you just achieve your goal. You are very proud of yourself and you move on to the next cycle. But there is something that happens all the time if you allow life to, to do it, right? And if you allow yourself to do it, it's you will learn. You will achieve new skills. You will get new friends. You will find out something about yourself that you didn't know, meaning that you will grow. And that's a three, the third G that uh, represents goal, grit, and grow. 
Uh, amazing. Thank <laughs> you for sharing that. I love the video game analogy. I really, that one really resonated with me. We talked a bit more in depth in the podcast, which is coming out tomorrow morning uh, around this idea of, right, we go through a video game, we play a level, we don't necessarily get through it. And we have to try a few more times, try different tricks, different motives, different tactics, and then eventually we'll find a way to get through it. But it's seeing it as that challenge and finding a way to get better as opposed to seeing, oh, I failed and it didn't work. Therefore, I'm a failure and really resetting re, uh, ourselves. So I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and what... that reduces stress. Sorry to, to interrupt this, John, but I believe that that reduces the stress of life, right? Because we are not afraid of failing. We are not thinking about we will do bad or we will not be enough. What will happen is that we didn't do enough maybe right now, but this power of yet, right, that is so famous, but the yet continues and, and we can do it again. We can try again. Uh, so we, we are more kind with ourselves and more, um, we are our own cheerleaders too. You must, must be. And a few more great comments in here. Uh, Hannah, thank, Hannah, thank you for jumping on here again. Uh, happy to uh, share a little bit more about your story. Nurses fix it uh, best in collaboration with doctors. Uh, well put, Jennifer. Yes. Uh, possibility in action. Love it. Uh, is, that, is that a book recommendation there? I'm seeing maybe uh, I see Jean Linda. Chapelier. Uh, uh, thank you, Linda. <laughs> Such great energy, no doubt about it. We are all anxious to join in the 3G journey community and belonging are so important. Thank you, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Uh, grit and persistency, love it. Oh, and John Thompson, the third JT3, joining us live. Oh my God, yes. Amazing, amazing book. Please find him and buy the book and enjoy it. Thank you, John, for being here. <laughs> How to be an ace in business and life. John's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. Uh, so fun. Uh, at the end of the day, well, it all comes down to learning and the ability to learn, which requires vulnerability loss and letting go. No doubt about it. Carry well put. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, going through this journey, it certainly gave me a new appreciation for an unlikely person, which is Kim Kardashian, who I never paid any attention to, but I watched an <laughs> interview with her on David Letterman has this show on Netflix. My next guest needs no introduction. I think it's called. And, uh, he interviewed her and I was like, I like David Letterman. So I'm going to watch this and see what she says. And I got to tell you, it really gave me appreciation for how much she has put herself out there. And of course now has hundreds of millions of followers and this kind of thing. But you know, uh, uh, this miniature version, uh, I will say with the book is, is a creation journey is a very vulnerable experience and it's an amazing one. And really a, even more amazing when you go through it with other folks. Uh, Miriam, are you ready to jump into the rapid fire question so people can learn everything really valuable there is to know about you? <laughs> Always ready. <laughs> can, can we go back? I want to share one quick quote. Can we share the beautiful quote from your son that was in the story you shared? Can we tell that story real of quick before course. we jump to rapid fire? Your son came to you one day after a stressful day at work. And what did he say to you? Or you came to him actually, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, I came to him. He wanted to play. I didn't really, was very interested. And um, he told me, this is your life. This is your choice. This is your journey. And this has been the motivation and inspiration for the rest of the, of the book. <laughs> Unbelievable. And he's uh, 27 years old. How old is he? Oh, that will be great. No, he's just seven. Oh, seven, <laughs> now, now he's nine, but he was just seven. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And what a thoughtful young man, no doubt, uh, from the influence his parents have had on him. I love it. All right, let's jump into the rapid fire questions here, my friend. And I always like to start with the hardest one first. Are you ready? Ready. And as we go here, ladies and gentlemen, if you have further questions or comments, please drop them in for Miriam. We'll try to grab them before we uh, hang up here in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, Miriam, favorite sandwich? Oh, Capres. Delicious. Uh, tomatoes, <laughs> little mozzarella. I love it. Favorite yes. color? Blue. Blue, of course. It's all over your cover of your book, The 3G <laughs> Cycle of Life. Love it. Favorite, favorite or most memorable vacation spot? Oh, that's clear. Alex, you are here to hear me. Canada. We went to Quebec. We love it. The high hotel. <laughs> Do you speak a little French? Is it zero? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful city. I love it. Uh, here's one, Miriam. Uh, scariest animal? Oh, um, tarantula, I guess. Yes. Tarant oh, nice. I haven't. I don't know if I've ever seen one other than in movies. Uh, like yeah, it. Snakes, that's enough. Yeah. Snakes get a bad rap. I haven't heard spiders much yet. Uh, better fruit, Miriam. Apples or bananas? Oh, apples. Oh, well done. I, I, I dislike bananas. <laughs> <laughs> you dislike bananas. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, I'm not sure how to react to it. I've never heard anyone hate a fruit before. Or, you know, it's interesting. Bananas. Oh, I uh, have a long list, but bananas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite or most memorable movie on your list? Oh, I have right now, I'm biased. I just watch it. Uh, Sluts. Sluts. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, it's, it's, I pronounced it probably wrong. If someone remembers it, it's uh, the story of a psychiatrist interacting with um, Jonathan Hill, that is an actor and producer, and their relationship is stunts, I believe, is spectacular. I recommend it. <laughs> nice. This one always uh, gets it gets a good insight into people. Uh, first concert you ever went to? Oh, I, I really know this. So my husband came to visit me to Peru. I have never been in a concert in my life. I am a medical student, so I, I, I don't have a life uh, probably. And he came to Peru and he took me to see a very famous Latin uh, singer, uh, Jo, Alex, help me here. Jo, jo, oh my goodness. I will, it will come back to my mind. He is very famous. I, it will come to my mind. Alex, if you can help me, send me the, the name. <laughs> Drop it in the chat. <laughs> Please. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, favorite smell, Miriam? Favorite? What? Uh, smell. Smell roses. Oh, Valentine's Day. Well played. Well played. Uh, I'm sure there's... And my know, grandma's name was Rose, so Aww. it's easy. There's probably, a, I have a hunch there's a, you know, maybe a dozen or two roses sitting on the kitchen table right now, maybe. Uh, oh, Ricky Martin? That's what no, some Jennifer's getting. No, no, Luis Miguel, Luis Miguel, the romantic guy, Luis Miguel. So for the Latins, you, you guys know who he is. <laughs> nice. Uh, last photo on your phone, Miriam. Um, let me check uh, <laughs> right now, but I believe it's related to... Oh, I know, actually. It's an advertisement right now. So, guys, one of my friends is producing a documentary about elderly with dementia and the healthcare system. We will be having the presentation in two days. So, just text me and I will give you all the information. It's by free and it's to create awareness about the healthcare system. That's my last. <laughs> wow. Impressive. <laughs> if, uh, I didn't know that you will ask, but it's <laughs> perfect. Favorite song to sing, Miriam, with or without an audience? Oh, like some kind of child song it has to be something like, you know, in Spanish and a child song for sure for my kids or something. so many, so many good ones. <laughs> Miriam, what is one thing you own that you really need to get rid of or throw out? That I need to, sorry, to get? That you need to get rid of or throw out. Oh, throw out. Oh, oh I know what. Uh, my obsessive compulsive and workaholic <laughs> behaviors, if I could put it in a bag and throw it out. Just tie it up yes. in a bow, throw it out the yeah. door. I'm, I'm trying my best, but this is still part of me. I'm trying. <laughs> you know, you're the second person on Meet the Author Live to uh, want to say they want to throw out a, a bad energy or a bad habit. I love that. Elisa Parenti was the other one from a few seasons <laughs> oh, ago. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, most, most audacious goal for 2023, my friend. Uh, be interviewed by Oprah. Hmm. I like it. You hear that, Oprah? Uh, yes. If you are there, I will love to have your blessing and, <laughs> you know, help with promoting my book and sharing good feelings. So <laughs> I love <laughs> it. It's, it's out there in the universe now. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you had to sign all these books. Did you do the signing yet? No. So funny story. So the books were supposed to come yesterday. I don't have them. I never saw my books yet, like the real version. So I am very excited. So if someone buys my book, you will be seeing my book before me. So just to let you know. <laughs> A little Send hiccup. A picture. <laughs> little hiccup with the delivery. That is. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, well, since you don't have a copy of her book, can you still share a praise quote from it? Do you have one of those handy? You've got so many oh, great ones. Yes. Oh, I, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really super. Let me. I have it prepared here. Wait a second. I am very, very lucky to have beautiful praises. Give me a second when you I'll, are. I'll run asking. through some of the chats here. This was a guest from Jennifer Ricky Martin. No. Uh, let's see. A few other guesses here. Uh, Danny Goki. <laughs> Give Oprah Granter's ice cream and she will grant a wish. 
really? If someone knows her, please connect me. <laughs> I, I will I will I will share the the blessings. <laughs> so I have here one of the I I, I really appreciate this one because um, I met this lady just by good luck and uh, she's a very very recognized journalist and she actually wrote a book about burnout. Uh, the first book about burnout that I really read, I, 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 I never dreamed that she will actually allow me to interview her and then say something about my book. And she says, in the tricky cycle of life, Dr. Silverglide combines personal storytelling and scientific insights to offer readers a framework for a happier, healthier life. The book tackles the threats of, to our well-being and the strategies to improve it. Jennifer Moss, award-winning uh, award winning author of The Burnout Epidemic and Unlocking Happiness at Work. So she's a real expert on this. Um, I'm blessed of, of having, you know, her, mm. her positive comments. But I had so many, and I want, to, I want to say something that beyond the ones that I have for very recognized individuals, uh, probably I adore even more the ones that come from the normal individual the daily individual that is saying i feel like you are having a conversation with me i feel connected uh i i see myself in the book and that is so important because you will not allow me to to lie uh, john on this when we write books we we assume that we are sharing with others we want to share with others we are giving our heart to others but we don't know how others will feel about this and when we have the good luck to really generate this click uh, in the life of others and maybe contribute for something positive, uh, at the end, that's a dream when we write a book, to, to really connect with others. And thank you so much for, for being part of this journey with me, all of, all of you that are, that are so, there. <laughs> so powerful. Would that also fall into your most memorable moment in the writing journey, this kind of feedback loop or is there something else? What really, what do you think you'll remember most about this kind of year or so you've been? You've been I know about? what, I know. And it's actually the only negative thing that happened to me during the book and was my marketing first, first week of marketing that I cry all the way on because I am not a marketing person. I have no idea how to sell you the winner ticket of the lottery and when i confess that to you know to linkedin people and friends what i receive is a lot of support so people will reach out to me and start giving me different tips of what about if you do this what about if you do that <laughs> and suddenly from that week of almost zero sales i went up and i achieved beyond my my goal uh thanks to the support of the community and what i learned is again let people to help you show your vulnerability. Nothing bad about that. You don't need to be ashamed. People will help you and you will learn. And now I am much better on marketing for sure. It's really amazing that uh, uh, brand new first time authors can do a pre-sale and completely fund the cost of publishing their books, even if they're a little bit in lack of confidence at the start, as I think I'm hearing here. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> it, yeah, it was, it was challenging, but I believe that that represents also my book. Uh, and the message of my book, I was there, I was in most, my most vulnerable and challenging moment, crying, and I was able to use the catalyst of life, in this case, LinkedIn community helping me and supporting me, and the creators community helping me and supporting me, and I learned, I developed new skills, and I achieved my goal, even beyond my goal, and now I, I am much better on, on that area, I feel more confident, and, and I learned. And that, that's the message of my book, really. <laughs> it's amazing how this journey uh, uh, can really help us dig into sort of so many different feelings and emotions we've had in our lives. I mean, I wrote a book on leadership and I found myself tearing up a few times writing some of the stories because they were so impactful to me. So I can only imagine with yours uh, okay. how it was even more so the case. Uh, best part about being an author so far? I, I have one that is probably a, a kind of a selfish and very personal, but um, I was able to add uh, stories from my kids. I was able to add art from my kids uh, and create a book that was written by me, but actually that has 
my kids involved, stories from my husband, my family, and a, a lot of new friends that are part of the book. So I believe that is what I what I got from it is is you know love and and, and a feeling of community. This was a, a collective book for me. It was a truly family affair here. And what an honor it was for me to be interviewed for your book. It really was yes. a doing that. Thank you for uh, reaching out to me on that one. That was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. I, and I love your, I love your chapter. I love the story. Uh, a lot of things to learn from it. Uh, so I recommend you guys to look for it. <laughs> and for your book. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, Miriam, what would you say to someone considering writing a book? Please go for it. I mean, even if even if if you think that uh, you don't care about publishing per se, or uh, this is psychotherapy. <laughs> this is the best way to learn about yourself. Is an amazing introspective journey, and um, and I believe that if you have a message and if you are dreaming with creating an impact in the life of others this is the way to, to go. This is the way to do it. Wow. What an encapsulation of this whole, whole <laughs> thing. Uh, the way you've embraced this journey, Miriam, and come into it so vulnerably and embraced the journey, trusted the process and made your, made your way through it, even with an elegant tantrum or two, you still survived <laughs> and you still have a book out there. Congratulations. Uh, five words to describe your writing journey, my friend. Introspective, vulnerable, happy, love, growth. Wow. Well, well put. Closing thoughts for our really amazing audience here that's been so engaged and active in the, audience, in the chat here. Thank you so much. Closing thoughts for our, our listeners here today. Um, I want to close with what my, my kids said, and, and, and that's a message that I want you guys to take home, is this is your life, this is your choice this is your journey don't allow circumstances to stop you don't allow life to tell you that you are not able to do something don't be a victim don't be a bystander either you have the power inside of you and yes you will have difficult days i still have them and you will not be perfect that's okay and it's okay not to be okay what is not okay is to just surrender don't surrender ask for help uh keep growing this is your life. This is your choice. Keep going. What a powerful message. Miriam, uh, so great to see you. Thank you to our listeners for joining in here today. Miriam, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with not only Meet the Author Live, but also the podcast on Creator Community. Really great to have you here as a guest. Thank you so much. Such a privilege, really. Thank you so much. The privilege thank is you. Oh, the privilege is all mine. Thanks again to our listeners for joining this episode of Meet the Author Live. Definitely go check out Miriam's book, The 3G Cycle of Life, wherever you buy books online and see her full interview premiere tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on YouTube, Apple, uh, wherever you get your podcasts out there. And join us this Thursday for our next episode of Meet the Author Live to meet Suzanne Rosky right here on New Degree Press to hear her talking about an adult gap year in Mexico. What the heck is that all about uh, with her family that transformed her life? Thanks again for joining us, everybody. I'm your host of the creator community, John Saunders. Keep creating.